Greetings all. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Abby Robinson and I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at Atlas Core and also a class two alum. I extend a special welcome to our entire community and wanna really shout out those joining us from the America Indian Found American Indian Foundation as well as Atlas Core. With your support, this partnership has been made possible. And today is a milestone day. We officially launch the American India Foundation Impact Fellowship in the United States, a new collaboration between the American Indian Found India Foundation and Atlas Core. The fellowship is the US service focused leg of the American India Foundation AIF bilateral fellowship program and is being implemented through a partnership with Atlas Core. And as I mentioned, this partnership represents an organizational milestone for both entities. For Atlas Core, we have collaborated over the years with AIF, including they also hosted an Atlas Core Fellow. In addition, the idea of Atlas Core originated in India. While our founder, Scott Beale, was working and living in India, he came up with this idea of this international exchange program for social change leaders. And our first class included three fellows from India. So it is so special that today we come full circle and we launched this new official partnership to strengthen our ties with India and to engage more emerging professionals from India. And we really wanna thank the American Indian Fo India Foundation for helping make it happen. To celebrate this event, we bring together dynamic speakers from both organizations. We shall hear from both our CEOs, as well as alumni from both programs, and hear details into the fellowship. So those of you who are joining and thinking about applying, we're gonna provide you some of that information. We'll also have a question and answer, so I encourage you, whether you are joining on Facebook or YouTube, share your questions, and at the end, we'll try to get to as many of those as possible. I also invite you to visit the webpage aif.atlascore.org. That includes all the details, including how to apply. On that note, let's get started. It is my honor to welcome American India Foundation CEO, Nishant Pandey, who will share a few words about what this collaboration means. Nishant, please join me. Thank you so much, Abby. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, well, first of all, very happy new year to all of you. Uh, good morning, good evening, depending on your location. I'm so happy and excited to be joining this very special launch so early in 2022. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better beginning of the year. Uh, but I do hope that, uh, you know, all your friends and family are staying safe and healthy, uh, you know, uh, Thankfully, Omicron is relatively mild, but it's also a rude reminder uh, that COVID has not gone away. So please take all precautions uh, and take care of yourself and your family and friends. Um, I also want to thank, uh, you know, the AIF staff and uh, uh, Atlas Core staff for putting this event together. Uh, as I said, I'm extremely, extremely excited about the launch of this special segment, a new segment to our 20 year old fellowship program. For those of you who may not be uh, familiar with AIF, AIF uh, was created 20 years back in the aftermath of uh, the Bhuj earthquake. Um, for those of you uh, who may be my age will remember, uh, it was a very tragic, uh, uh, humanitarian disaster, uh, but it led to creation of AIF. We have a very uh, simple uh, mission, a uh, very simple mandate. Our mission is to empower underprivileged women, children, and youth in India and do it in a way that it strengthens the relationship, the partnership between the two largest democracies of the world, US and India. We believe that uh, pow poverty is multidimensional. So we work on health, education, and livelihoods. 
and leadership development, which is intrinsic to everything that we do. And therefore, the whole US India, um, what we call as US India bridge building, is a very important part of AIF's mandate. And the fellowship program contributes directly uh, to it. So it is not a surprise that the fellowship program happens to be our oldest program. It started pretty much at the same time as uh, creation of AIF. But obviously, over a period of time, it has gone through its own uh, evolutionary journey uh, based on our own learnings, based on the feedback from various stakeholders, most importantly, the fellows who uh, participated in the program. So uh, the fellowship program was started in 2001 two, uh, And for the first few years, uh, it was kind of focused on disaster relief and long-term rehabilitation. And then the scope got expanded to more long-term issues. Obviously, the three issues of AIS priorities, health, education, and livelihoods, but also lots of other issues like women's rights, human rights, um, you know, legal rights um, of LGBTQ communities and so on. So a number of uh, environmental issues, of course. So a number of topics. And then in 2011, something interesting, important happened, again, based on the feedback that we got from the fellows. Um, we expanded uh, the scope of the program to include 25% of the cohort from within India. Uh, that we believe, based on what we heard, will increase the opportunity for um, this binational uh, learning and exchange platform that we were creating through the fellowship program. So that was an important milestone. Uh, it was also around that time that we uh, named uh, the fellowship program in honor of President Bill Clinton, who played a very important instrumental role in creation of AIF in 2001 uh, and two, And the program has been running all, um, you know, all uh, through these 20 years. And about 501 uh, fellows have graduated from, uh, from this program. Uh, it has created an immense impact on all kinds of uh, indicators. But there are two things which kind of stand out for me. Um, out of these 501 fellows, almost 75% of them have gone on to become social entrepreneurs. So it's very clear, and you will hear um, from one of them today. Um, so it's very clear that the fellowship program has uh, provided a springboard uh, for social entrepreneurs with strong vision, vision in the field of social justice to kind of formalize uh, their effort and institutionalize their effort um, and to make a difference in the world for many, many decades to come. The second, uh, I think, thing that stands out for me is that all of them, it doesn't matter what they chose to do after completing their fellowship, have become very strong champions of a strong US-India relationship especially on the people to people and on the civil society to civil society side. Uh, I don't think I need to go into the detail of uh, why uh, the US-India relationship itself is a very important, very strategic uh, goal um, for all of us. I think that is quite self-explanatory, although I can speak for hours and hours on that. Um, I can show you that. So. Uh, when we completed 20 years of our fellowship program last year, obviously, like any other learning organization, we went, to, went into a reflective exercise on what it means for this program going ahead. So the first thing we did uh, is to renew our commitment to the program for the next 10 years. I don't think we um, we run many programs, but I don't think there is any other program in the history of AIF where we have expressed our explicit commitment to a program for 10 years at a stretch in one go. 
So this program obviously is, um, uh, occupies a very special um, place in the AI of portfolio. So that is the first thing we did. And then, of course, a series of other um, uh, changes uh, that we have made in the program. Uh, basically, the overall um, idea is to expand the scope of the program. One, of course, uh, thematically, uh, looking at arts, culture, science, sports, and how these fields can play an instrumental role uh, in uh, making a difference in the lives of people in both countries and strengthening the ties. Uh, so looking at it from a service uh, perspective, of course. Um, and the second thing we did is to change the name of the program and call it Banyan Impact Fellowship because Banyan Tree represents the all-encompassing spirit and philosophy, as I'm sure all of you know. So under the Banyan Impact Fellowship program, which is the new avatar of the program, if you like, we also felt based on feedback and over the years and uh, um, uh, you know, feedback from various stakeholders, we also felt that to make it truly binational, we need to uh, add a new segment in the program, which is about bringing young, bright uh, professionals, especially from the civil society space in India, to the US and invest in their leadership development, their capacity building, so that they can go back with the new um, skill set and make a contribution to the civil society space in India. Again, I don't want to go into too much detail, but essentially India has a very vibrant civil society. We all know that. Uh, but one very um, um, kind of common feature of civil society in India uh, is that most of the organizations are very obviously founder uh, led but also driven by the founder who are often very charismatic and very passionate, passionate and things like that, which sometimes means that there is not enough investment um, in the second line of leadership. Uh, part of it is also to do with lack of resources. Um, NGOs in India are by definition resource constrained organizations. So we thought that this could be a great way to strengthen the capacity of civil society organizations who are doing excellent work on the ground so that they can sustain their work uh, uh, by developing a second uh, line of leadership uh, beyond the charismatic uh, founder of the organization. So that was the kind of uh, thinking. And of course, we have used our 20 years of experience of engaging with civil society organizations as host organizations. Um, so that is the kind of, uh, you know, the new um, uh, thinking uh, that uh, uh, has informed uh, the new avatar of the Fellowship Foundation, the Banyan Impact Fellowship. Of course, the idea is that it will continue to strengthen or to contribute to strengthening of US-India partnership, especially on the civil society to civil society side. And of course, uh, it will strengthen the civil society and it will it will create a cadre of um, leaders in the civil society space uh, who bring new set of skills uh, by their exposure, by learning, by exchange and by leadership development in the US. So that's the whole idea, which makes the Banyan Impact Fellowship, in my opinion, uh, a very unique program in the U.S.-India corridor uh, in terms of learning and exchange uh, by focusing on the philosophy of service. There are um, several other exchange programs uh, between U.S. and India, but I can't uh, think of anyone which is exclusively focused on service. So that's the exciting part. Um, the first cohort of the Banyan Impact Fellowship Program uh, incidentally started last month. Uh, these are fellows who are going to serve in India. And uh, we have 
just launched uh, the recruitment process for the fellows for the US. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining uh, in this uh, very exciting launch event. And I hope that you will either apply um, or will spread the word among your friends and family and peers uh, so that more and more people can benefit from it. I also want to use this opportunity to thank all our supporters because it's really your support that makes all of this great work possible. I also want to mention specifically the Krishnan Shah Family Foundation and RIST um, who have made the resources available for us to think about a 10-year vision. Obviously, in the absence of financial resources, uh, it's very difficult to um, create a 10-year vision. So thank you so much, KSFF and RIST, uh, for supporting this initiative. So I think with that, I think I have, I'm coming back for the Q&A session, but I think with that, I will hand it back to Abby. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nishan. And I wanna echo that thank you. We are so appreciative of all the supporters who are helping to make this happen. And a special thank you to you for your vision and your energy. For Atlas Core, it truly is an honor to partner with such an accomplished organization, to continue the legacy of what you all created with your fellowship program and to be an active part of strengthening the U.S.-India connections. And so Abby, we are really we looking forward to this. We find a better organization that, than Atlas Core uh, for this segment of the Banyan Impact Fellowship. As you said, you know, we have, uh, the two organizations have worked together and we have had a fantastic relationship, of course, with Scott and now with Bijan and the whole team. So thank you for um, saying yes <laughs> to the idea of partnership. Well, mutual appreciation. Uh, excellent. And, you know, when we talk about legacy, one of the most effective ways to understand the impact of these fellowship programs is by hearing from the participants. And today we have two alumni, one from Atlas Core and one from AIF, who are going to share their stories and how fellowship participation impacted their long-term professional as well as personal lives. Our first alumni speaker is an Atlas Core Fellow from Class One. She served at Ashoka Youth Venture in Washington, DC, and is currently employed by UNICEF India. And just to give you a little insight into Gargi Saha is her name, is that since her fellowship, Gargi has worked with thousands of affected communities devastated by the Kosi floods in 2008. She was also involved in direct rescue operations along the bordering districts of Bihar, Nepal for more than 2000 children and she also has successfully enacted legislation and built models that work to combat child and human trafficking in South Asia. Gargi really embodies the Atlas Core values as she continues to serve for a cause greater than herself while creating tremendous local and global change. And a special note with Gargi, in 2021, last year, Gargi was recognized as the Atlas Core Alumni Changemaker, which is an annual award we use to recognize one of our outstanding alumni. So it, it was a great honor for me to welcome Gargi to the stage to share more of her personal story. Gargi. And let's make sure Gargi is off of mute. Let's try again, Gargi. Your words were so amazing that we're speechless. <sighs> Thank you so much, Abby, for your kind words of appreciation. That really means a lot. And, uh, you know, today when I am here, I am also representing the first batch of Atlas Corps, uh, you know, including my fellow fellow uh, fellows from India. Uh, uh, I am really, uh, you know, honored to be here. And all the very best to this entire uh, Banyan, uh, you know, impact partnership. Uh, I would like to share, uh, you know, how I was a, a struggling uh, kind of a, a, you know, professional, young professional. Uh, I always wanted to work for the development sector in India. And I got an opportunity just after completing my master's. I was working with Childline in Delhi and then, uh, you know, moved on to the other uh, five uh, neighboring northern states in India. However, that deep passion uh, within me to take, uh, you know, forward the issues of the children from the most marginalized communities, children and young persons to the policy level, 
that needed some kind of a bridging you know and that is when atlas corps came forward and after like a, a almost like a 5 6 months of thorough uh, this thing you know i was selected as an atlas corps fellow uh, which was such a huge honor and this fellowship gave me the opportunity to uh, gain those extra skills that exposure gave the global platform uh, you know after a year of uh, you know this exchange program i came back to my country to serve for the most uh, marginalized uh, communities of children women and young persons in none other than uh, bihar and chatisgarh like abi uh, said you know a lot of difficult uh, times i have seen including the kosi floods and uh, you know similar kind of uh, drought situation etc as well as i have worked i got an opportunity to work in chatisgarh you know one of uh, india's uh, uh, left wing extremist uh, states and um, this also you know helped me to connect uh, you know uh, with a lot of civil society organizations actually in india and uh, i was also able to uh, you know make an impact through developing cadres of young persons um, not only from the affluent but from the most most marginalized communities because many times what happens is that they are the ones who are left out and like uh, you know someone mentioned abs- uh, uh, you know before me that it's so important to develop the second rung of leadership and especially uh, for the young persons uh, you know the adolescents and that is what i am doing uh, you know currently in bihar working uh, uh, you know with thousands of such marginalized young persons uh, youth trying to empower them and also building the capacity of uh, civil society organizations both at the national as well as as well as the community level i would also like to share uh, i know there are a lot of young persons who have a lot of potential and they really want to do something for the society please keep your passion up don't let that uh, you know die down because that is what is going to make a change you know whatever cause that you are most uh, compassionate about you know let that keep uh, burning inside and uh, keep your focus but at the same time it's very important to recognize uh, you know the skills that a lot of times we lack or the expertise and the exposure so you know don't let those opportunities go please try and you know get advantage uh, you know of whatever opportunities comes your way and uh, you know including the atlas corps fellowship i think what i am today i owe a lot to the atlas corps fellowship the kind of exposure the global platform that i have uh, uh, you know received in the past and i'm still receiving this has been amazing i mean from uh, seven fellows uh, to start with in 2007 uh we have moved on to more than 100 countries i mean this is just amazing over a period of 14 years and uh, you know a huge shout out to scott i still remember those days of our struggles and uh, you know we used to be told that uh, whatever we do whatever we achieve as the first batch will actually shape the others uh, you know the following batches so we had a lot of uh, kind of you know burden on our shoulders and i really hope that uh, you know we can keep up to those expectations uh, thanks to abby thanks to bridgen for your leadership and i really wish uh, you know atlas corps and this entire partnership a long way to go and uh, i really wish all all our young persons who are listening to us to you know let that spirit up and uh, you know keep uh, you know achieving uh, the stars so thank you and over to you abby Thank you Gargi always an inspiration and I love two key phrases I heard you say is one about keeping your passion and also holding on to those dreams and finding a path to make them reality and I even feel now more than ever we we needed to hear that today and hearing how it's not always an easy path sometimes we're uncertain about that future and know that by connecting to these opportunities such as a fellowship experience or engaging with others in the community we can find that path and find where our passions lie and how they can impact our community so thank you for sharing those words and really thank you for all you've achieved and keep on inspiring keep on doing your good work locally in india Excellent. Now we're going to hear from an AIF alum. We're going to hear from Prashant Anand who was in 2017 to 2018 an AIF Clinton fellow. He served at the North East Affected Areas Development Society, NEADS in Jorhat, Assam, 
and he's currently the co-founder of the Samantha Foundation. And just to give you a little more insight into his career is he was, um, as for his fellowship, he, um, after his fellowship, he became the co-founder of the Samantha Foundation. And that is an organization that works in the remote geographies of lower Shivaliks in Uttarakhand on the issue of education. And he has started working on whole school transformation in forest and public schools as part of an effort with a focus on the girl child. And I think what's interesting about Brashan, his journey started with acquiring an engineering degree and leading to work with IBM, Sun Life India, for a time leading to work with urban communities on education. And from that work in the private sector, he went on to work in Jorhat, a part of Upper Assam in the far northeast of India with the Missing tribe. And he learned he had an avid interest in bringing together minds to resolve local problems. And he has been engaged in being part of collectives that propagate the sense of shared action. So Prashant, I welcome you to this stage to share a little bit more about your dynamic professional journey and how your fellowship participation impacted you. Thank you, Abby, for the kind words. Uh, and I would also like to thank the American India Foundation and Atlas Corp uh, that has given me an opportunity to share my story. Uh, so my story is, you know, like it starts from the days uh, when you uh, are, you know, family in India and you to, got to make a living. And I took up engineering uh, as a degree when I was a graduate. I went on to work in the corporate for a while. And uh, at that point in time, as an engineering, engineering graduate, you know, you believe in science more than humans. Uh, and I think that's something uh, that changed, you know, as I took up the path of development. Uh, the American India Fellowship has been instrumental, I would say, uh, in awarding me an experience uh, that developed a sense of interdisciplinary approaches uh, to problems. Uh, you know, uh, that is something I experienced as I worked with the uh, tribals uh, in the Northeast as part of my fellowship uh, and being part of a family, you know, the AI family of fellows. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, learning each day, sharing our experiences, looking at problems with different lenses, uh, having brainstorming sessions on what could be done, what's the way out, uh, having those heated conversations and coming up with a conclusion that we would then undertake in our respective geographies. Uh, I think that is something uh, that enabled me, you know, to kind of go further, uh, which is finally which led uh, me, you know, into the forests of Uttarakhand. Uh, in the Western Himalayas in India. I traveled uh, all along these forests, met different communities. I think it was a sense of, you know, knowing people, uh, engaging minds that I learned during my first days, uh, which, you know, gave me that sense that, you know, uh, be with communities, understand them, look at problems from all perspectives, uh, be them indigenous or, you know, uh, different lenses within a community, uh, women, men, children, elderly. Uh, so that went on and, you know, uh, finally we settled uh, very close to the forests and decided to work with pastoral, nomadic, uh, tribal and rural communities. Uh, the essence being education, as that's what the uh, community, you know, came up with as a problem that they were struggling to work with. And that's something that I learned as an AI fellow, you know, uh, the sense of uh, getting from within the communities, the challenges that, you know, we are looking to solve. Uh, as you know, as a fellow, when I talk to uh, all my co-fellows and alums, I mean, that's the beauty of uh, the American India Foundation Fellowship, I would say, you know, uh, it gives you an opportunity to be with people from different, uh, in two different parts of the world, people from different backgrounds, like from doc aspiring, aspiring doctors to, you know, uh, I would say psychologists to, you know, childcare educators and so you've got so much variety out there to catch up with people and learn and understand and, and that has been a key part of what I have been uh, in the last uh, three to four years that I've been working right now and these have been challenging years I would say and as in when I you know uh, encounter a challenge uh, my first go-to is you know my friends back in the uh, AI family talk to them uh, discuss problems with them look at solutions uh, what can we think of uh, we, we all are connected um, I mean, that's one thing that is always, you know, uh, given me that uh, option of, you know, going up to a friendly place and talking about the problems we face. I mean, we've been working on a lot of challenges out here, uh, right from, you know, access to quality education, uh, health, girl child health. So there have been a lot of issues that we've been working with. And uh, it's been really 
wonderful to you know kind of connect with my co fellows and get perspectives uh, so a key that i have understood as you know uh, my fellowship experience and working for all these years is uh, that it's better to you know uh, engage with more and more people uh, discuss problems look at solutions as a collective um, not uh, reinvent the wheel or rather if there is something that's already been accomplished one needs to contextualize it so <clears throat> even for two different geographies like us and india i think a lot of the problems are based on you know uh, the inequity that exists or the you know humanitarian belief systems that we look up to Uh, and i think that's something uh, that we as a collective uh, as people in different locations or different geographies learn from each other and work towards uh, solving you know problems uh, so for me uh, this opportunity this launch of this uh, new initiative of aif uh, offers that opportunity uh, to a lot of the youth to not only accomplish a personal and professional goals uh, but bring back knowledge i think the one key take away for uh, all the youth who apply for it uh, is to bring back the knowledge and the network learnings uh, and they are the ones which will actually impact uh, communities back home and it's vice versa i mean even if they go there they do take up their own learnings from here as they go along uh, and i think that's the best part uh, of this new initiative that aif is taking up that it's deepening the people to people engagement Uh, which AIF strongly believes in, and which I've been experiencing uh, all these years uh, that I've been uh, part of the AI family and also a co-founder at Samanta, uh, built bridges, built friends, and uh, collectively contest challenges and problems. Uh, thank you, Abby. I would like to welcome you back now. Thank you, Prashant. and i love your mention of family because atlas core talks about that as well and i feel like we have just ex extended our family circle to involve both organizations which is an amazing opportunity for incoming participants as well as you all our alumni and that's so exciting and also your key message about multiplying impact we talk a lot about at atlas core about the true impact of this fellowship is not during the active service but actually what happens as alumni into the future and i think you and gargi both demonstrated that in your words and i'm so excited as we launch and continue to implement this collaboration that multiplying of impact we're going to see in india as well as in the united states as well as these through these connections and through this family that we're going to create together so thank you so much prashant for sharing your words today excellent and on that note We're going to round out our illustrious list of speakers and then we're going to talk a little bit about the details of the fellowship and how to apply. So now it is my distinct honor to welcome Atlas Core CEO to the front to share some words about this collaboration. So Bijan Deshan, I welcome you forward. Thank you so much Abby and I want to pick up uh, something that Nishan said there's no better way to start the year with launching a corporation like this. And Nishant you mentioned um the role that the American India Foundation has played and this fellowship in particular. And when I hear banyan as a term it reminds me of the big trees that I visited in Rajasthan some some while ago and how strong they feel. And I think that's a great metaphor for the corporation because you mentioned that you are in it for the long term. together and thanks to your supporters and i really appreciate that there's no better way for me as a ceo to start with such a strong partnership going forward it's really interesting because two days ago and it reminded me listening to these leaders who just spoke two days ago was martin luther king day in the us and it reminded me of that long history that india actually played in the US civil society and civil rights movement because many of you will remember that 63 years ago uh Martin Luther King Jr went on a on a month long trip to India because of Mahatma Gandhi and the role model that he was for the civil rights struggle in the US and two days ago was a good good day to remind ourselves that civil societies and social justice leaders have a long history of cooperating together which we can build on and it also reminds me and hopefully you 
that when we think about developing self, developing others and leading movements, something that is very important to what Atlas Court does and wants to do and help leaders in is about the integrity that Martin Luther King Jr. showed, is about the leadership skills and the leadership examples that Mahatma Gandhi and others set that have a long history of showing us where we can draw energy and motivation from. And it also reminds me of Atlas Core's mission and what we want to bring to this partnership. We are so grateful to be working together with one of the most important countries and an important organization to focus on Indian talent, on Indian social change leaders and civil society leaders who will get the opportunity to serve in the US and in India. We want to broaden that. And it reminds me of an anecdote of a colleague of mine back, and Nishan knows this when I was working at Save the Children, a colleague I met in Indonesia a while ago from India who came one evening brimming with gratitude and joy, mentioning this is the first time I've met a Pakistani in my life. And I mentioned this example because she said, we are so similar and we have so much to learn from each other. I mentioned this example because Atlas Core represents a community from over 110 countries. And this is something we want to do in addition to developing those leadership skills. We want to bring people together and connect. And Prashant, you mentioned, we need to be connected. We need to be connected as local leaders and as global leaders and focus on challenges like never before. If you think about inequality, COVID, climate change, and all the conflicts going on, this is what we want to do, bring young leaders together in order to solve global challenges on a local level, on a global level together. So this is why I want to reiterate something that all of you have mentioned. Please, young leaders, young civil society leaders, apply for this fellowship. Help us bring you to the US, build your skills, and return to India and work together on a global and local level to solve challenges like we've never seen them before. I want to thank all of you, Nishant, the American India Foundation, and my own team who have worked together really hard to bring this together. All of our supporters, I look forward to these applications and I look forward to many more occasions on which we can celebrate all of your leadership. Thank you very much. And Abby, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Bijan. And really, thank you for reminding us about the potential and the power of these young leaders and that when we bring dynamic individuals together in these community-based experiences, as we heard about it, talk about it as a family, that's when we really achieve impact because we can support, we can inspire developing others, developing selves and leading movements. So um, we're looking forward to doing that. So thank you for renewing in us and reminding us the value of these young leaders. Excellent. I just want to, all, again, thank all of our dynamic leaders. This was truly an inspiration to hear from the top, our two CEOs, Nishant and Bijan, sharing your perspectives and really the organization mission and vision behind this type of collaboration. And then hearing from the participants, Gargi and Rashan, how you both benefited from this experience and how you continue to rely on these communities is just an example of what we plan to achieve and what this support that we're receiving from these communities is going to achieve. And so on that note, we're going to hear more about the details about this fellowship. So all of you who are listening and might be thinking about applying, now is the time to focus, to tune in so you can learn more. I also want to remind you that the website AIF atlascore.org has key details as well as the link to the application. So on that note, I'm going to invite my colleague Zachary Morris to the front and he's going to share all the highlights. So Zach, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been really inspiring to hear all the speakers today and I'm excited to talk about the fellowship details and logistics. Amazing. Um, well, hello, everyone. Um, I am going to talk to you a little bit more about um, what the Banyan Impact Fellowship seeks to do. Um, similar to the Atlas Core Fellowship, uh, fellows will participate in the 14-month blended model, which includes starting remotely full-time in India prior to U.S. arrival. 
Fellows will serve full time at host organizations in the United States, addressing social issues that complement their expertise. They'll increase their leadership skills through hands on experience while developing invaluable connections to learning effective practices. Um, you can work on a broad range of social issues from the education to the environment to human rights and so on. Uh, again, complementing the expertise that you already have. Your role and daily responsibilities at the host organization varies greatly from organization to organization. Um, and the US-based component of the fellowship allows participants to engage in group cultural activities like the DC Monuments Tour, sporting events, US holiday celebrations, and more. In December, we hosted a fun holiday party where fellows um, made gingerbread houses. Since many US embassies around the world are still operating at a reduced capacity, there will be three different US arrival dates based on flight and visa availability. <clears throat> In addition to doing day-to-day -day work with the host organization, you'll also be participating in leadership training with both AIF and the Atlas Core Global Leadership Lab. The Atlas Core Global Leadership Lab comprises um, more than 200 hours of experiential learning um, that is both theoretical and practical. Um, they are four day training immersions convened over the course of the fellowship um, three times a year where you'll participate in presentations and workshops led by innovative social change leaders who share practical strategies for social impact, as well as their own professional journeys, such as you've heard here today. The professional development series explores critical soft skills like conflict resolution and leadership. Now, you've heard today about a lot of the benefits of being part of a fellowship program in the United States. And we're really excited about the Banyan Impact Fellowship because you'll be part of two great networks, uh, the Atlas Core Network and the AIF Network. Um, and, and as Abby had mentioned before, uh, it, we are both extending our family circles. Um, you will benefit from dual professional professional development and networking opportunities provided by both AIF and Atlas Core, as I mentioned previously. Um, and it, you know, speaking about the benefits, it's all about, you know, as Gargi said, keeping your passion and holding on to that dream and finding that that path to make it a reality. And the Banyan Impact Fellowship can help with that. Or Prashant, it's um, you know collaborating with other leaders and finding solutions to social challenges and problems that affect civil societies, both in the U.S. and India, and figuring out how to collectively address those challenges and multiply impact. Um, it's just really a great opportunity to get that perspective in both the U.S. Um, and and India and how they relate with one another. Now, here are some of the details of the of applying for the fellowship. Uh, to create the next generation of social change makers in India, um, AIF and Atlas Core encourage emerging leaders with a minimum of five years of professional experience to apply for this opportunity. Um, ideal candidates are mid-career professionals who have experienced leading processes or teams and have influenced an organization strategy. Um, all of the requirements for the program can be viewed on the website. Um, as well as some details here on the slide. Um, now, how do you go about applying to the fellowship? Well, you visit again, aif.atlascore.org and it's a multi-step process. The first step is to fill out an application. The application for this fellowship and our classic Atlas Core Fellowship are the same. And it requires a copy of your undergraduate transcript or diploma and two references. Attaching a CV or resume is encouraged, and you may be asked to submit samples of your work to provide evidence of your professional skills. If your application passes review, you'll be invited to an, an interview and then considered a semifinalist for potential placement for either the Atlas Core Fellowship or the Banyan Impact Fellowship. For the Banyan Impact Fellowship, you may be asked to respond to supplemental questions and participate in an interview. 
with AIF. Now our priority application deadline is January 31st. Um, so coming up quickly, your references will not need to be submitted by January 31st, but should be submitted within a couple weeks of, of that deadline and by the time we interview you. Now, I'm just going to share a couple of application tips with you um, in order to ensure that you are successful when applying. Uh, the first one is to be specific in your response to the questions, especially when talking about your accomplishments and professional experience. Think about what makes your profile unique. My second piece of advice is um, about the skills section and the social, social issue section. It's really crucial for us to understand your abilities and what will make you successful in service of the host organization. Since we have a diversity of different host organizations, we really focus on trying to find the right match for your professional and social issues. Um, so those questions should be answered thoroughly as the most successful candidates demonstrate their expertise in a specific skill set and social issue by providing detailed information about professional experience, responsibilities, with concrete examples that communicate accomplishments. Um, it's important that your application demonstrates at least two years of experience in a certain skill area, although we do, it is ideal to have five experience overall. And that's how you can demonstrate your competency in one. Um, in terms of English, it's important to be clear and concise and to always check over your spelling and grammar, as that is an important feature of how we um, rate your application and review you for a potential fellowship, since you'll be serving in an English-speaking environment 40 hours a week. And lastly, it's important to write a really strong biography, um, since that is what prospective host organizations will see first. Um, and this bio should have your professional skills, accomplishments, and experience um, integrated thoroughly. It's really an opportunity to sell yourself in 300 words or less and let the host organization know what you're an expert in. And it, it complements those strong answers for the skills and social issue area sections. Um, so that is, that is it for... Um, Talking about the details of the fellowship, we will be going into question and, and answer now. Um, yeah. <laughs> On that note, remember aif.atlascore.org. And uh, we really appreciate that insight. And so for some of the questions we've received on social media, uh, we have a few that we're going to ask. And so we have our dynamic group here. And so I'm going to serve as moderator. And the first question is actually directed toward you, Zach. And it's a question about how does the global pandemic impact the U.S.-based portion of this fellowship program? Yes. Yeah, so it's a constantly changing scenario. Uh, you know, we never know what's going to happen. However, um, we, as I mentioned before, we have this blended fellowship model where you start remotely serving um, with the host organization and you have different arrival dates um, for when you can come to the U.S. based on visa availability. However, for India, the travel ban was lifted, um, you know, a couple months ago, which makes it easier and paves the path for, for you to come to the U.S. Great. And I think also important to remind everyone that Atlas Core has successfully brought fellows from around the world to the United States over these past two years. So we have been able to do it and our team is ready to continue to do it. So uh, we are confident. And excellent, so now my next question is for Nishant and I'm also going to take Bijan to provide the second answer. So Nishant, as an organization focused on global leadership development, what are AIF's goals and hopes for these 10 years that you mentioned in your opening remarks? Thank you, Abby. Uh, and if you allow me, actually, I want to answer uh, another question, which I right. read on the, in the comment section, which I think is important to clarify before I answer your question, if it's okay, right? Yes. So, looks like 
maybe some people are confused um, that um, what we are talking about today is the entirety of AIF's Man in Impact Fellowship Program. So I just want to clarify that this is an additional new segment to what we have been doing for many, many years. So if you are based in the US and want to go to India uh, for service um, experience, there is another segment, uh, which is the long lasting segment uh, of the impact fellowship, band and impact fellowship that you can apply for. As I mentioned in my remarks uh, in the beginning of the event, we already have a cohort of 12 fellows serving in India, of course, because of COVID, we had to limit it to only Indian fellows, but there is that segment. And we are, of course, not talking about that in this um, uh, event. We are only focusing on um, getting the Indian um, fellows to come from India to the US. Right? So I just wanted to clarify that and you can get more information on our uh, website. Now, coming to you, I think we uh, we have a very simple goal, which um, I think I kind of briefly touched upon, but I would like to you know elaborate a little bit more. Our goal over the next 10 years, and again, thanks to the long-term um, visibility on financial commitments from our supporters, our, our goal over the next 10 years to both deepen and uh, broaden the constituency of future leaders, especially in the civil society space, who are invested in the idea of a strong US-India relationship and in the idea of, the, uh, of strengthening the impact that this relationship creates on uh, people in both countries. So that is the kind of 10-year goal. Uh, of course, as I said, from our existing um, uh, fellowship program, we already have um, 501 fellows who have graduated. Um, uh, but someone mentioned um, once, and I think uh, this is something that we would like to kind of maybe invest a little bit more in the coming years, is that, um, of course, these are these 501 fellows are fellows who applied successfully, got the fellowship, and completed the fellowship. But then there are thousands and thousands of other people, young professionals, who applied for the fellowship. So they uh, they may not have got the fellowship, but they were already interested in the idea of strengthening the U.S.-India relationship. And I think that is a pool that we would like to kind of tap into um, much more uh, going forward and basically expand the uh, constituency uh, of people like that. Again, uh, sitting on the East Coast uh, or if you're on the West Coast or in India, you may feel, hey, what is this fuss about? Why are we talking about US-India relationship? We already have a good relationship. Uh, but I think if you look at historically, um, the relationship between the two countries has obviously improved significantly in the last 10, 15 years. And a lot of it is, and rightly so, been driven by the two governments and the business community. Uh, when we talk about people to people and civil society to civil society relationship, there is still a lot that needs to be done. And I'm not talking about all the hundreds of thousands and probably millions of Indian students who come to study in the US. I'm talking about the traffic uh, going back uh, from the US. India. So that is what um, we want to do. We want to make sure that there are enough people on both sides who are passionate about the relationship between the two countries because we know from historical and global uh, experience that the relationship between two countries is only sustainable in the long run and gets strengthened if there is people-to-people -people connection. And I think that's what we are trying to contribute. Great insight, the people-to-people -people connections. And now, Bijan, I'm going to turn it to you to share a little bit from the Atlas Corp perspective, whether 10 years or uh, a year, uh, what are some of the, the vision for Atlas Corp as you see it? Wonderful, and I, I want to pick up on what Nishan said because 
he spoke about the people who are not uh, managing to get the fellowship themselves. And it links to something I am very, very um, uh, keen to develop, which is thinking and acting on scale. How can we connect more civil society and change leaders from all sectors? And, you know, I came into this organization and found Atlas Core has started to do that with the Virtual Leadership Institute. We are bringing people together virtually and we're creating connections across countries, be it Russia, uh, be it be it our, our work in, in African countries and be it right now for Singapore and even Brazil and West Africa. So there is a lot we can do. Um, we have to think about more opportunities because as Nishan said, when I think about India and the largest democracy, this is where some of the talent and the solutions for what global challenges look like and Indian challenges will come from. So the next 10 years, I see us working together, thinking about scale and delivering what we promise to do with quality. It sounds boring, but it's very important. If we don't deliver on the quality of the experience of the organizations hosting, of the fellows that we select and help grow, we are not succeeding. So we're planting a seed and we need to continue to invest in the quality of our candidates, the quality of that experience, and the quality and connection of the community, then it will grow and scale. Great insights, I love. There are great things ahead for both organizations. So on that note, I have two more questions. The first I'm gonna to direct towards Zach regarding the application. So there've been a few questions about if someone applies, an applicant from India, applies to the Banyan Impact Fellowship, are they also eligible for the broader Atlas Core Fellowship? And if, an Indian applicant has already applied within the Atlas Core system, will they also be considered for the Banyan Impact Fellowship? Yes, so uh, thank you so much for that question, Abby. It's the same application for both the Banyan Impact Fellowship um, for service in the United States, uh, for service in, in India, it's, it's different. Um, and uh, it is the same as the Atlas Core Fellowship application. However, for the uh, Banyan Impact Fellowship, um, you may be asked to provide supplemental information later on. Um, if you're currently an Atlas Core semifinalist from India, you do not need to apply again. You should have received an email from me um, asking for your interest in the Bain Impact Fellowship so that we consider you. Um, so again, it's filling out an interest form that you may have that you may have received if you qualified um, for for this special opportunity. Excellent. And we also posted on social media two sources of information, the website, aif.atlascore.org. Also, you can email your questions, apply at atlascore.org. So great places to get your questions answered. And now the last question is going to be a wrap up. Hearing from the three of you, and the question is, what is one tip you have for our potential applicants of what you think would make their application strong. So what's something that you might wanna see from the application? And we have the perspectives from the Atlas Core team, as well as Nishant, who was a host organization. So Zach, I'm gonna start with you, and then we'll go to Bijan and then Nishant. So Zach. Sure, I, I shared a couple of tips earlier, but I, I would say the the most important one from um, my perspective is just being specific about your accomplishments. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, what makes you unique? Great, and Bijan, what did you recommend? Uh, I think you know that already. I always look for self-awareness. I want to see how people have grown through challenges and whether they are aware of their strengths and their challenges in which they want to grow in. That's my number one. Great insight. And our big finale, Nishant, what would you recommend for someone's application? Well, I would recommend something which I think is not only going to improve and strengthen your application, but also I think make the fellowship experience much more meaningful which is passion, show your passion, find a way to convey your passion in your application. 
uh, find a way to communicate it. Um, you know, this is not a program where, you know, which you can do on the sites as a hobby or something. It's going to really extract uh, from you everything that you have in terms of commitment and passion um, so that you maximize this opportunity and go back uh, to your organization and kind of contribute in a significantly um, uh, substantive, more substantive way than you were doing before. So passion is, I think, a very, very important ingredient of your application and your 12 months as a fellow. Excellent insight. I think words for all, whether applying for the fellowship or just being a impactful social change leader in the world, passion and self-awareness. So thank you, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts and perspectives and answering our questions. And on that note, I also want to thank everyone for joining us here today. We are excited to continue implementation of this collaboration. We look forward to re receiving your application. Just a few quick reminders. The deadline to apply, January 31st, 2022. You can find out more information at aif.atlascore.org. It also includes some highlights as to some of the details, the eligibility, some of the timelines. It is anticipated that fellows will start, selected fellows will start in July of 2022. So over these months, there's a multi-step process. So we'll be working through that process. And then our, uh, we do encourage any questions to be emailed. That is the most effective way to hear from us, apply.atlascore.org. So we look forward to receiving your applications. We appreciate the ongoing support and we are excited for the implementation of this collaboration. So stay tuned for more details throughout the year. Thank you.